he, if I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? Like kind of a, like a little maybe if somebody. So if he were there in the beginning with God, the father, Jesus, the son, and the Holy Spirit in the beginning. <laughs> Do you realize what it means to say that? What's good? It's your boy Zachary Carroll, aka Pastor Z. Welcome back to my channel where I help you apply the Bible to all of life's craziness. Today, we are talking about Pastor Mike Todd, the senior pastor or the celebrity pastor of Transformation Nation. All right. So he is back in the news for something he did on the pulpit during a sermon where he was talking about gender identity, gay marriage, and it has garnered a lot of criticism. He even anticipated that it would garner a lot of criticism. I've seen a few channels review it, but I wanted to put my two cents on it. I viewed some of it, but uh, so I basically know what he said, but I kind of want to just go through it myself. So let's see what he's talking about. Um, to serve in the kingdom, and to serve in kingdom dominion, you have to submit your opinion. How many people have an opinion in this room and watching online? Come on, hands. I need y'all to help me. I, I, and how many people have opinion on a lot of stuff? Let's just be honest. I wouldn't do it like that. I would never wear that color. Ew. <laughs> I would never eat that. Oh, I would love to eat that. How many Shout out to the setup. I mean, the setup is pretty on point pretty cinematic actually value their opinion come on let's let's be honest if your hand is not up right now you're lying you value your opinion culture teaches you to value your opinion kingdom teaches you to submit your opinion oh they're okay. not gonna like this i'm gonna need my whole security team after this Oh, you got a security team? <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. Most churches have security teams. We have a security team, and we look out for the senior pastor. Your opinion is valid. It just doesn't matter that much. God gave you the opinion, the ability to have an opinion. It just cannot actually be equal or greater than his opinion for you to actually serve. God doesn't have opinions, he has decrees. Many plans are in the mind of a man. It is only the Lord's decree that will stand. Proverbs 19, 21. In the kingdom, okay, okay. Submission means that it has to become sub to the what? Mission. God's saying, Take your opinion about whatever it is and put it under what I said about it. Think whatever you want to think, but just take that and put it under here. And when you act or you're an ambassador or a representative of me, when you're serving me, do not let your opinion come out of your mouth. Okay. They just did me wrong. What am I supposed to do? My opinion is I should slap the crap out of them and talk about their mama. God's like, yes, I love the creativity that you had with that moment right there. Now bring it under submission. I got to pray for them now? Scream. That's good. I gave you lungs. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. But now what I need you to do. Oh, 
How do you know you're serving the king? It's usually the opposite of what you naturally want to do. Yeah. I'm trying to give you, I serve I agree. the king. No, you do what you want to do. You, you value your opinion of it more than you value God's, <laughs> not just opinion, his decision on it. Yeah, God doesn't have opinions. He only has decisions. God's already decided some stuff that we think we have, can have an opinion on. To the idea of an opinion indicates a specific perspective of a circumstance. So it is my opinion based on my perspective of the circumstance, yada, yada, yada. So God, in essence, cannot have an opinion because his perspective is everything. He sees everything and knows everything. So he doesn't have an opinion. He has decisions. He has laws. He has decrees. He has plans. He has desires. He has plans for us. He has a path for us. He can set our path. He can set us on the way if we choose. So I just want to stress this idea. This is not like it might. Some people might say this is a nitpick, but God doesn't have opinions. He doesn't. I mean, it's it's impossible. He has decisions. And I think this is kind of the issue a lot of conservative Christians are having with this segment is it sets it up like Pastor Mike is already setting up God's decision in a lesser form as an opinion. Like God is just someone at the table with all of us. And from his perspective, God's opinion should be the ruling opinion of the table. Whereas no, God doesn't have a seat at the table. God has a seat on the throne. We are all on the table that's separate from the throne. In general, what he's saying is correct, that we do need to submit our opinions to God's decree. I, I'm trying to decide right now, Cordell, how much I'm going to get him to try to... God decided male and female. So, so maybe opinion is not even, like, it's not even what he meant. Like, he means decision, because now he's saying that God decided male and female. I, no, 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 I'm not, this is not a bad, I need y'all to hear my heart on this. This is not a bashing, this is not a, he, if I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? Like, kind of a, like a little maybe, if somebody... So if he were there in the beginning with God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the beginning, he <laughs> do you realize what it means to say that if I were there in the beginning with God, the father, when he was creating everything, he would have said, could you do something different? Mm, that in an essence is equalizing the culture to God's decree. It's like an appeal that culture is valid. What what culture is saying over here is is right. 
but it has to submit to God in the kingdom. And that's where I think people are getting upset. That's where I am critiquing him because the the posture you're giving is to suggest that the culture is valid, is right, is correct. But God decided to do a different way. There are there could be other ways to God, but God decided it was only going to be Jesus. And that just I think that dumbs down the gospel that dumbs down and takes power away from God. OK, it's a very good reason why God created male and females. He wanted our unity and community to bring forth life. And he wanted our unity and community to represent him fully. I did a video like a little over a year ago where a lot of my Christian conservative brothers and sisters, some even family members reached out to me disagreeing with where I said that is that God is not a man. I said basically that God is non-binary, but he prefers he, him, his and father. And yeah, that's jarring to people who grew up in a culture in church where all you hear is father, he, him. And yes, the Bible consistently always refers to God as father. But if you go to Genesis two and you read how men and women were created, we were both created in God's image. So that means the image of God is both male and female. And there are other scriptures that say that God's love is akin to a mother's love for a child. And there's even a scripture I believe it's in Jeremiah or Isaiah where God says, I am not a man. There's a scripture that says God is not a man. He himself is saying, I am not a man that he should lie. So the reason why there is male and female, because the unity, the holy unity and community that he wants us to be in because being alone is not good only represents him when it's a male and a female that come together and can produce life. He wanted humans to be fruitful and multiply. Well, I was born like this. I don't know how I feel. That I, I feel you. And I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. In why? See, again, why would you wish there was another option? That shows that you don't fully agree with God. Now. I'm okay with him saying he feels for people struggling in these ways. We should feel for these fellow image bearers going through these struggles, sexual immorality, gender identity, alcoholism, all of these things. A lot of us, go through them ourselves to varying degrees of exposure. Certain things you can hide, certain things you can't. But as a body of Christ, we should love on people as God loves on us. And to be loving is sometimes to piss them off and say, you're wrong. Culture, you can make up whatever you want to. In culture, you can build whatever you want to, but it's the truth of the matter is that if we are going to submit under what the king says, 
I'm going to have to wrestle with what I don't even fully understand. Oh, God. Pastors don't say this because they want to be absolute. Well, why did that? I don't freaking know. I know, honestly, I wish God would have made it so much simpler and it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. See, <sighs> this is why Alan Parr says Mike Todd is not recommended. And, you know, I have to agree that Mike Todd is not recommended. At best, he gives milk. But normally he is appealing to culture. To suggest that it's not simple and that he wishes God would have made it more simple. How? How would God have made it more simple? You're either male or female. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I literally had a conversation with somebody months ago about the complications of God. John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through him. Is that simple or is that complicated? In the beginning, God ma made man in his own image. He made them male and female. He created them. Is that Simple or complicated. If you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you for confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Is that simple or complicated? <laughs> it is very simple. And so the culture complicates it. Feelings and emotions complicate it. I don't know why it is pastor minister of the gospel wants to change God's decision. I don't know why. No, I'm serious. As a pastor, like, so what do you think about gay men? I don't know. It's a sin. Homosexuality is a sin. Those who dwell in it are not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's what we know. Now, if you say that and then say, I understand the struggle, I feel you. I also struggle with sexual immorality. It's hard to look at a extremely fine, half naked woman on Instagram or at the beach or in Publix, or in Walmart, and not be inclined to think lustful thoughts of her, to keep it pushing. Yeah, it's a struggle. It's a struggle for a married man to run across an extremely friendly, fine woman and keep things pushing and form boundaries. And decide, you know what? No, I'm not going to go there. We're not going to get lunch. We're not going to do these things. Sexual immorality is a common issue. But the answer is clear. The answer is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall make your path straight. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. We were bought with a price. Because of our sanctification, because of God's salvation, we are inclined to walk in holiness and not dwell in sexual immorality, impurity, lawlessness. We don't do that.
And those answers should be very clear to a pastor like Mike Todd. And that's what's disappointing. But I do know in the kingdom, uh, they're going to cancel me. In the I'm not the king. I don't, I don't know why he decided to do it like this. I don't know why you're wrestling like that. And I don't know what to do to help you, but to stand with you. So everything he's saying is great in parts. Everything he's saying is great in parts. It's like what he just said, I'm cool with. But what he said previously, it's like, hell no. Nah. So it's like when you say, I don't know why you're going through this. And I don't know what to do to help you. But to stand with you. Bro. That's beautiful. I'm thinking that's all anybody struggling to be sexually pure wants to hear anybody struggling with anything. If I have a married friend, man and woman that are married, that are going through a divorce or they're, they're, they're struggling. I'm not married and I'm not a marriage counselor. So I would not tell them what to do. I would not tell them that I know what to do. I can stand with them and I probably would ask what's going on and such, but that's beautiful. But to say that and in the preceding sentence be like, I don't know why God this did this. And the way he's sounding, it's like, I don't particularly agree. And that's, that's the issue. It's like, he doesn't agree with God. He's just saying that this is God. This is what God wants. I, listen, I wish, I wish he did something different. I wish he did something different, but he didn't. It's not, it's not me, which is true. And that is a good tactic for us to use to put the blame on Jesus, to put the blame on God for all sorts of things. Like, why do other religions not get to heaven? Well, because Jesus said so. But to then say, I wish other religions would go to heaven, that's inevitably dumbing down Jesus. Okay. No, I don't wish other religions go to heaven. I wish other religions will be converted into Christianity and go to heaven. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You can't believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And also say, I wish other religions could go to heaven. There are people of other religions that I know and love. There are people that I meet on a regular basis that are from other backgrounds and I thoroughly enjoy speaking with them and I try to form a relationship with them whereby my words would be trustworthy enough for them to even care what I have to say about Jesus. But my empathy should not be at the expense of God's authority. or God's veracity. My empathy should not be at the expense of God's veracity. And that's what Mike Todd is doing. He's saying, listen, I don't know why he did this. In fact, I'm with you. I agree with you. If, if I was in the back, if I was, if I was in the beginning before they did it, I would have asked for something different for you. Because you're struggling with this and the mother folk. And 
pray with you and not, and you're welcome at Transformation Church. Trans is in the title. Transformation, you can be here. Oh, God. You're what? You're loved here? I want you here. Will I marry you? I, I can't, not because I don't think you found love. Just as a kingdom ambassador at the orders that are in the constitution of the kingdom. I know people don't talk like this because they want it to be black and white, but there's some things on this earth I don't have the answers to. And so when I don't know, I just default. I come sub to the mission. I know people are going to try to make this clickbait and make it something I didn't say. I hope you hear the heart of what I'm saying. I, I wrestle and pray for all type of people all the time. Because how freaking unfair it must feel to feel something every day of your life and it not line up with the God you love. I don't have all the answers. My wife used to work in the, in the makeup community. There's tons of people who have different identity um, associations in that community. And one of her favorite people in there was a homosexual male, the sweetest guy in the world. I mean, had the love that most Christians don't have. Would do anything for people. I'm off on a tangent right now, but my heart is aching right now. Because the truth of the matter is, he wants a close relationship with God. And what I'm saying to everybody in this room is, you don't have to have an answer to stand with somebody. See, oh that, that's the issue. He's saying we don't have an answer. We have the answer. We do. We do. Uh, Y'all are so religious. I, it's all fun and games till it shows up in your house. Uh, until if my children are homosexual, I will stand with them in this struggle work with them but i would also teach them god's decree and the way of the world and the way god created everything so and my children will know where i stand as it pertains to that and no if my children want to marry someone of the same sex i would not marry them and i would not go and that might put me at odds with my children but I'd rather be at odds with my children than be at odds with God you follow God despite man are you dealing with it in your home oh, they just need to throw them away and cast into a lake of what that's God's workmanship and a masterpiece I'm offending religious spirits right now. I already know it. What I'm saying is, who's going to serve? Who's going to serve the, the untouchable? Who's going to serve the ones that the church is outcasting? Who's going to serve the people who your parents taught you to hate? Yeah, no, I get that, but the idea is what does he mean by serve does he mean affirm does he mean not help them walk upright i did a video about using people's chosen pronouns and i do believe that if you do not have a relationship with them and you're not discipling them you should go ahead and use whatever they want you to use so that you don't start an argument because it's such a hostile 
topic. But if somebody comes to the church and that comes up, we need to address it, which is serving them. Because allowing them to live that way and never saying anything, never teaching them the truth, then God is going to turn his gaze on us. If we don't say the truth when we have full opportunity to, then what are we really doing? But I think that's good enough. I know people think, at least people in my small circle are saying now that I, I go too hard on Mike Todd at Transformation Church, but honestly, he is the most popular pastor for millennials right now. And I, if a, not a week goes by where I don't hear my peers and those that I shepherd talk about him and talk about what he teaches. And if he's teaching this, if he's teaching things like this, there's a problem. I got to keep saying something. And it's fine. If I get hated because I'm hating, if I get hated because people think I'm hating, that's fine. I'm just trying to teach the truth, the real truth. So let me know what you think down below. Do you agree with Mike Todd's rendition or sermon about trans people in the church, about submission, all that stuff he said. I love the dialogue with you down below. Thank you for watching. My name is Zachary Carroll, a.k.a. Pastor Z. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We're on the road to a 1,000 subscribers, and we need your help to do it. Y'all be cool.